Welcome to the third degree. I am Sule Prince and I'm here with Dr. Tony Costa. Dr. Costa, we know that Easter is about um, Jesus Christ. So how did the Easter bunny get into this picture? Uh, what is the meaning of the Easter bunny and eggs? E uh, the bunny having eggs. And how does the Easter hunt also um, connect to this? Is the word Easter even in the Bible? Well, let's begin with the last question about whether Easter is in the Bible. Um, the word Easter, the English word Easter, only appears in the King James Version yeah. of the Bible in Acts chapter 12, verse 4. Um, that's the only place it appears in. The, the New King James Version does not have the word Easter there. They, they've corrected it. The Greek word in the, in the New Testament in Acts 12, verse 4 is Pascha, which as we've seen is the Greek word for Passover. Mm -hmm. Um, but the reason why the King James translators um, put the word Easter in there is really because of two translators, very famous translators. One was the reformer Martin Luther. When Martin Luther uh, translated the Bible into German in 1522, um, he used the word Oster, Ostern, in his New Testament translation, not just in Acts 12, verse 4. He also included it in Luke 2, chapter 2, verse 41. Mm -hmm. Where it says that Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Jerusalem for the Passover, he actually uses the word for the the, the for Easter mm -hmm. to celebrate the Easter uh, feast, um, and then he uh, also uses it in First Corinthians five seven, where Paul talks about Christ our Passover Lamb. He refers to Christ there as the uh, the uh, uh, Easter Lamb. There he uses the German word for Ostern Lamb, and William Tyndale in in fifteen. 25 followed suit. Uh, William Tyndale, the English translator uh, in England, uh, also used the word Easter in his translation in English of the New Testament. And so he would refer to Jesus, for example, in 1 Corinthians 5 7. He would actually, he translated it as Jesus is our Easter lamb and oh, so okay. forth. That's how that got into the King James. The King James translators used the uh, translation of Tyndale. Um, and that's how we get the word Easter in our King James Bible. But okay. all current versions use the right word Passover. Passover. Um, and that's because, again, as we've seen, Easter was simply the Christian term for the Passover. Now, in terms of the Easter bunny and Easter eggs and so forth, the, the idea of the rabbit entering into the picture is something that is outside of Christianity. We know that the hare or the rabbit was used in, in ancient customs, in ancient uh, paganism as, as a sign of fertility. Okay. You know, we hear the term breeding like rabbits. And, and that's because the rabbit is a creature that multiplies very quickly. It is very sexually active. And so in some pagan religions where sexuality was central, which it was in many pagan religions, the rabbit became a, a symbol of fecundity, that is, of fertility and and of um, fertilization. It became a symbol of sexual uh, height and sexual activity and so forth. And and therefore, during the summer, the spring months, what ended up happening was rabbits, of course, uh, hide underground in, in burrows. At least the wild rabbits do. And therefore, during the spring season, people in Europe would have noticed that rabbits would come out of their burrows mm -hmm. and they would begin to, that this was the, the height of their breeding season. And so they would associate the rabbit with the spring season. They would associate the rabbit with, again, rising out of the burrows. Yes. So there's that concept of rising again, rising out of their burrows and uh, bringing about life, fertility. And as we all know, uh, during the springtime, that's when life seems to come back. So the ancient pagans, when they looked at the the, the uh, seasonal changes, they they identify the autumn, the fall, as as the time of death. The leaves fall off the trees, uh, flowers die, and they associated this with the death of, or the not so much the death, but the descent of various gods into the underworld. And so the Babylonians believed that Tammuz would descend in the autumn into the underworld. And this would be a time of mourning and grieving. There was actually a ritual where it's in the Bible, in the book of Ezekiel, where they talk about women weeping for Tammuz. Mm -hmm. And that's because he went into the underworld. And when the God descends into the underworld, what happens? Well, things die. Yeah. But then he comes back in the spring. He, he, he basically comes back out. 
And so when he comes back out in the spring, what happens? Well, life is restored again. And that's things, in paganism. Correct. Yeah. And so things spring back. Um, and therefore, the rabbit or the hare was associated with that. Now, when we look at the egg, the egg, of course, also represents life, mm -hmm. new life. And so an egg is, is laid by a hen and new life emerges from that. Mm -hmm. And so they associated this new season of life with eggs. But what happened was Christians in the East, uh, in, in Russia and the Ukraine and, and uh, in the Eastern part of Europe, what they did was they adapted the use of eggs to communicate something about the resurrection of Jesus. Now, obviously, they're not worshiping rabbits or eggs mm -hmm. or chickens or anything like that. They, they would take these eggs, and if you notice, they would, they would drench them in red uh, paint. And this red paint refers to the, the death of Christ, the blood that was spilled. Uh, and then, of course, on Easter Sunday, they would celebrate the resurrection by, of course, removing the shell covered in red, and you'd have this beautiful white with, within the shell representing Christ's righteousness. And that's why the tradition of wearing Easter bonnets and wearing white dress on, on Easter and so forth represents righteousness and new life in Christ. So the Christians didn't use eggs, obviously, because they were connecting this with paganism. Mm -hmm. They simply used it as a symbol of Christ's uh, resurrection. Today in the Passover Seder, our Jewish friends, when they celebrate the Passover Seder, there's an egg on the Passover Seder as part of the meal that they have during the Passover to represent hope and new life. Okay. Um, so the idea of the hare or the rabbit and, and of these eggs is something that is definitely connected to the idea of pagan ideas of fertility. Yes. And well, fertility. we don't endorse it as Christians. We That's do not endorse it as Christians, yeah. and we should not endorse it as Christians. Absolutely not. Uh, and, and of course, when it comes to the question, we get asked this question frequently, what about uh, Easter egg hunts? Should children yeah. be involved in, in Easter egg hunts? I think we got to leave that to the conscience of the parents, okay. uh, as long as the understanding is not that this has anything to do with paganism at all, um, or even Easter uh, uh, chocolate bunny rabbits or chocolate mm -hmm. eggs and so forth. Uh, I think we have to make it very clear to them that this has nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus. You want to have a chocolate in the shape of a bunny? Well, I don't think there's any harm in that, unless the child is thinking that this is what Easter is all about. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and considering the fact that we can make chocolate in the shape of anything. So I think it's up to the Christian uh, conscience. I think it's a good thing we keep our kids away from chocolate yes. and candy <laughs> because it rots their teeth yeah. and, and, and everything like that. So I think this is an area where we'd have to leave that to the conscience of mm -hmm. the parents uh, to do that. But as long as, as they maintain that this, this has nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus. Kids mm -hmm. eat candy all year round and they don't have to wait till this time of the year to have it. Um, so that's where we, we really find the connection here with uh, the Easter bunnies and, and the eggs. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. My pleasure.